it's it's a story that came out a little while ago, and I wanna I wanna read a a, a bulk of this article. It's not a long article or anything, but I do want to read it for you guys so that you guys can see where this stuff is coming from, because it's it's fucking bananas, you guys. There's a Nevada legislation that came out earlier this month uh, that basically wants to create a government run by tech companies is sort of the way that it's pitched, right? Uh, so this is from Carson City. It's from the AP here. So it's actually like a court. This is a, you know, a mainstream uh, news organization. So let's see how they kind of tackle this subject. Plan legislation to establish new business areas in Nevada would allow tech technology companies to eff effectively form separate local governments. Democratic Governor Steve Sisolak announced a plan to launch so-called innovation zones. It's always got to have a catchy title. Uh, innovation zones in Nevada to jumpstart the state's economy by attracting technology firms. Uh, the zones would permit companies with large areas of land to form governments to carry out some authority as countries, including the ability to impose taxes, form school districts and courts and provide the provide government services. The measure to further economic development with alternative form of local government has not yet been introduced in the legislature. Sislak pitched the concept to his state of uh, state of the state address delivered in January 19th. The plan would bring in new business at the forefront of groundbreaking technologies without the use of tax abatements or other publicly funded incentive packages that previously helped Nevada attract companies like Tesla Inc. Sislak named uh, the Blockchains LLC as a company that had committed to developing a smart city uh, in an area of East Reno after the legislation has passed. This notion of smart cities exists for uh, forever. Uh, and they all sound kind of insane and scary to me that you have to believe the principles of whatever fucking technocracy uh, the the fucking smart city is built around uh, giving giving tech companies like Tesla, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever the same kind of power as a country uh, sounds fucking nuts to me. Like that's a technocracy. You're letting a tech company determine what it can and can't be said. So if the Bill of Rights was run by the tech company, like it would basically be like, we're going to set community standards, but they're going to be vague, just like the community standards are for a lot of these social media companies. And, uh, and we can get rid of people whenever the fuck they want. Let's say the access to food is controlled by some RFID app on your phone. And let's say you are critical of the company you know, this 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 tech mecca that you live in and you're critical of it because, um, you know, let's say they're increasing your taxes uh, for for some kind of, uh, you know, new stadium at the school and you disagree with it and you're and you're vocal about it. And this tech company goes, well, we don't like dissent this way. And now we're going to cancel your RFID. Your, your user account so you can't go to the grocery store and purchase your food. This can lead to some real authoritarian type shit. Innovation zones. What is uh, actually fucking... What is innovate? What is stopping innovation from happening right now? In a lot of instances, it's actually capital, right? Capitalism is it, money; it becomes a limiter in in, a, uh, in certain respects to uh, to really innovate, to to really progress as a society. Uh, so, so this guy coming out and saying, "Well," and then they kind of talk about zones and zoning uh, and things of that sort. Um, but the key there is the fact that they want to they basically want to give a portion of Reno right now. The plan is to give a portion of Reno to a tech company that wants to purchase it and build a city surrounding that uh, that corporation. So it's, so it's not a smart city, so to speak. It's a corporate city where you have to follow the rules of a corporation, where it's private companies that are deciding what laws. I mean, that's how our fucking government works anyway. Uh, you could see that in Prop 22. 
You can see that in how corporations spend money on politicians to influence legislation. You can see that in the fact that fucking uh, Jeff Bezos is going to be a trillionaire and yet has not had to pay taxes. This is just pushing us much closer to that dystopia. Let's, uh, I want to look at a couple of comments because I know we kind of ran long on the, uh, on the live stream there. Uh, Holly corporations are people, my friend, <laughs> corporations are people, but they're also cities. Now they're also cities. Uh, as they say, uh, I'll believe that when Texas executes, uh, United States of Google. Yeah. Eventually. My buddy Andrew Frank actually had a really great joke that I, I feel like didn't get the respect that it deserved on the road, uh, where he talks about like eventually we'll will portions of the country will just be just be based on the corporations that owns the land. Uh, you know, you you have to travel to Walmart to get your groceries. You have to go to the nation, you know, the the state of Google to uh, to learn about these things. Um, let's, Dustin. I'm going to come back to your comment in a bit. Uh, Mark, uh, this may be the worst thing to come out than the failed release of Cyberpunk 2077. Is that game not good? I, I heard that that game is really fun. I don't know. I, I, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I missed that there. Uh, do you want a corporate, corp, corporate dystopian sci fi future? Because this is how you get a corporate dystopian sci fi future. Exactly. That's where we're headed. And and these fucking politicians are just handing it to them on a fucking silver platter of like, yes, you've already decided who to deplatform off of your off of your things. And it's usually uh, you know, dissenting left voices right now. Holly points at the company store. Uh yeah, actually, we've we've seen this kind of stuff before. Coal towns. Coal towns used to do stuff like this. Uh, so again, this is not really a new idea. We've just shifted industries. So it's no longer the coal industries that are tricking immigrants into coming into their uh, into their cities and paying them scripts, which is fake money that they can only use within the coal town itself. So they're completely in essentially indentured servitude, slaves, as it were, to the coal company. Now we're going to try to do the same thing for tech co companies. Uh, and you know they'll just invent their invent themselves some kind of fucking blockchain currency, uh, Amazon dollars. Yeah, that's how it is. Uh, Dustin says uh, corporate democracy is supposed to social democracy, uh, and unless we can participate in a more powerful way in corporate governance, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think uh, really um, social democracy in and of itself also has has some problems as a depending on what economic system it decides to be rooted in because if it's still rooted in in capitalism we've seen social democracies in uh, in Europe in a, in various different ways and they still have a similar problems to to what we do in America because they're still rooted in capitalism so it ends up being that that's uh the the uh the the problem is the root cause ends up being capitalism most of the time <laughs> Uh, and remember, corporate charters can be revoked by your home state. Well, if they become the government governing body themselves, those corporate charters are going to become basically the declaration of the constitution of of the of the corporations itself. So it's it becomes it's 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 another very slippery slope in a in a in a year that we've already seen a lot of slippery slopes form. Uh, Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. 
there you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.